Item Number SCP-7553 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-7553 is stored unloaded in a standard containment locker at Site-18. SCP-7553-1 instances are to be incinerated or stored on discretion. Experiment proposals involving SCP-7553 must be approved by Dr. Leroy beforehand. Description SCP-7553 is a Remington 870 Marine Magnum pump-action shotgun. The object is in near-pristine condition. SCP-7553's anomalous properties activate when held by a living subject and aimed at an object or situation that they consider to be problematic to them. Rather than pellets, one or more objects, SCP-7553-1, will be fired from SCP-7553. Footnote 1. Upon investigation, ejected shells were found to be empty. Researchers theorize that the contents of the shells get transmuted as they travel through SCP-7553. However, this remains unconfirmed. SCP-7553-1 instances vary between manifestations and typically exceed the size of SCP-7553's barrel. Instances also share the trait of automatically resolving, or, at minimum, presenting the means to reliably fix the problem at hand. However, SCP-7553 will not always react expectantly during these circumstances, as it has been observed to jam or focus on a different object within range on occasion. The reason for this is still under investigation. Footnote 2. See Addendum 2 for further details. SCP-7553 became known to the Foundation after a user of the website Parawatch, Falcon underscore Crazy, had posted on the forum claiming to own something, quote, paranormally handy. The user stated that the object was originally purchased at a gun show, and that they had accidentally discovered its, quote, supreme powers after, quote, trying real hard to clean it. After reviewing the digital evidence provided and noting that the user had previously encountered an unrelated anomalous object, these claims were quickly authenticated. SCP-7553 was confiscated, with their owner amnesticized and given a non-anomalous replacement. All relevant forum posts were subsequently deleted. Addendum 1. Test Log to uncover the extent of SCP-7553's capabilities, Dr. Leroy authorized a series of tests to establish the parameters of the object's anomalous properties. To access the unabridged testing log, contact Dr. Leroy. Test number 1. Context under the threat of further disciplinary measures, D-112 hesitantly inserted his thumb deep inside SCP-7553's muzzle. D-112 closed his eyes at Dr. Harvey's warning. Result: The force of the blast caused Dr. Harvey to stumble back slightly. After a moment, D-112 opened his eyes and gasped. His thumb was stuffed inside a finger puppet resembling a cat. D-112 nodded in amusement. Notes. Test was a recreation sourced from Parawatch. Test number 6. Context. A white wall with a streak of blue paint. Result. SCP-7553, when continually shot, released large splashes of blue paint. Notes. SCP-7553 continually leaked paint for a span of four hours. Further tests bearing a similar context of this nature are ill-advised. Test number 12. Context. An unlit cigarette. Result. A stream of fire erupted from the muzzle and onto the table. A junior researcher approached and doused the test area with a fire extinguisher. The table was heavily damaged, but the cigarette remained intact and was still lit. Notes. None. Test number 20. Context. D-112 wearing socks and sandals. The socks don't match. Result. The blast severed D-112's feet simultaneously, causing him intense pain. Notes. This was the first and only incident of SCP-7553 not producing an SCP-7553-1 instance. Test number 21. Context. D-112 crawling and bleeding profusely on the floor. Result. 
In a fit of panic, Dr. Leroy fired directly at the injured portions of D-112's feet. SCP-7553 proceeded to shoot a large mass of bandages at D-112, covering him from head to toe. Notes. D-112 nearly suffocated in the process, but survived, albeit with permanent disfigurements and severe blood loss. Test number 29. Context. A potted green conifer. Result. The tree was covered in many ribbons, ornaments, and Christmas lights. The final shot produced an elderly, obese human male in a Santa uniform. The individual collided with the wall, breaking their neck on impact. Notes. The corpse was a genetic match to Walter Saltzer, a part-time mall Santa living in Denver, Colorado. Coincidentally, the real Saltzer suffered a fatal neck injury a day before this test. Test number 33. Context. Dr. Leroy's previous university diplomas and accomplishments prior to joining the Foundation. Some of the diplomas were wrinkled. Result. A McDonald's job application. Notes. Dr. Leroy's request for the incineration of the SCP-7553-1 instance has been denied. Test number 40. Context. Broken power module on level 2, responsible for directing power to the southwest wing of Site 18. Result. An entire replica of the original power module manifested. The SCP-7553-1 instance slammed into the original power module at incredible speeds, crushing and exploding it into many pieces. Somehow, the instance inserted itself into the wall perfectly and directed power to the site without issue. Notes. Dr. Leroy was commended for solving repairs at no cost to the site's budget. Test number 47. Context. Dr. Leroy's vehicle, intentionally dirtied, emptied of gasoline, and absent of its battery. Result. A tear in space-time measuring 2.5 meters in length manifested, acting as a portal to a gas station in Baja, California, Mexico. Many witnesses were present during the exchange and began to either flee or film with their mobile devices. Dr. Leroy and attending researchers panicked. A Scranton reality anchor was activated but failed to close the spatial anomaly. Dr. Leroy suggested they physically push the vehicle through the portal. This plan was reluctantly agreed upon and enacted. After the car passed through the other side, the tear demanifested, leaving Dr. Leroy and several researchers in the area. As the gas station was unwilling to accept Dr. Leroy's money, he had to exchange currency at a nearby bank while frustratingly attempting to communicate with the teller. In the aftermath, all witnesses were amnesticized and the car was eventually fixed. Dr. Leroy was transported to Site 18 two days later, getting severely reprimanded and docked in pay. Notes. Testing with SCP-7553 temporarily put on hold after this experiment. Despite SCP-7553's unpredictability, Dr. Leroy saw promise in the object's anomalous properties by citing its capacity to generally resolve significant issues and to generate a wide variety of materials, physical or otherwise. Dr. Leroy's proposal of upgrading SCP-7553 to a minor Thaumiel class object was put on hold until more comprehensible testing data came to fruition. Addendum 2. Incident 7553. On May 14, 2013, Site 18 suffered a containment breach that resulted in a handful of anomalies escaping. Dr. Leroy happened to be handling SCP-7553 when the incident occurred and tried to defend himself. Begin Log. Dr. Leroy is in an anomalous object storage area. Dr. Leroy is thoroughly cleaning SCP-7553, placing removed shells into an ammo box when the site's alarms blare. Dr. Leroy, startled, causes the shells to tumble onto the floor. Dr. Leroy grabs his mug and investigates. Gunshots are heard. Dr. Leroy freezes, then rushes to the doorway, spilling some of his coffee. Dr. Leroy peers his head through the doorway. A guard is shooting at a levitating human brain, causing non-discernible damage. The brain telekinetically lifts the guard up into the air and repeatedly slams him against the floor and ceiling. 
Another guard is holding tightly onto a different door, being pulled on the leg by an entity appearing as a sock puppet. The guard loses her grip and screams as they disappear into the ventilation system. Dr. Leroy stammers backwards, drops his mug in shock, and frantically presses buttons on a keypad beside the door. Dr. Leroy gasps and drops to the floor as a wrecking ball is slammed into the keypad, crushing the device. An entity resembling a miniaturized crane attached to a pair of feminine legs adorning red heels enters the room. The entity tugs the wrecking ball away from the wall and advances towards Dr. Leroy. Dr. Leroy shudders and backs away from the entity in fear when he bumps into the cart. Dr. Leroy snaps his head to SCP-7553, sighing in relief as he grabs the anomaly and aims it towards the entity. A click is heard. Dr. Leroy, sweating, pulls the trigger repeatedly, more clicking. Dr. Leroy audibly curses when the entity sways their body towards him. Dr. Leroy ducks in time as the entity stumbles towards SCP-7553's open locker. Dr. Leroy gets up and pushes the entity inside the locker and attempts to close it. The entity sticks one of its legs out and stomps on Dr. Leroy's foot. Dr. Leroy screams in excruciating pain but manages to slam and lock the door shut. Banging is heard from the locker and Dr. Leroy falls to the floor. Dr. Leroy removes his shoe and sock, inspecting his injury. A three-inch hole is present on his foot, and his toes are bent in the wrong position. Dr. Leroy hyperventilates until he notices a shadow approaching the wall leading adjacent to the room. Dr. Leroy audibly chokes before grabbing SCP-7553 and quickly reloading it with the shells on the floor. Dr. Leroy shoots at the keypad twice, then proceeds to shoot at his injured foot once. After a moment, Dr. Leroy opens his eyes and expresses bewilderment. An out-of-order sign is taped onto the keypad, while a wet floor sign is stationary by the broken coffee mug. Dr. Leroy cranes his neck to his foot. A single Hello Kitty band-aid is present, barely covering the wound. A loud hiss is heard. Dr. Leroy looks up to see a purple, feline entity entering the room. Its red glowing eyes are trained on him, licking its lips. Dr. Leroy instinctively fires all the remaining shells at the entity, with the last shot pushing him to the floor. Dazed, Dr. Leroy lifts his torso up and grimaces. The entity pauses as its visage is adorned in clown-like makeup, wearing a collar with a single jingle bell attached to it and having their head inserted into an enormous piece of toast with a hole cut through it. Blinking twice, the entity looks at the floor's reflection, then stares at Dr. Leroy. The entity hisses deeply. Dr. Leroy's lip quivers. A dark stain manifests on the front of his pants. End log. Dr. Leroy's body was later identified by genetic testing and dental records. After the containment breach was resolved, testing resumed on SCP-7553. While SCP-7553 can resolve issues that pose a minor inconvenience to the handler, it can't solve major ones. The reasoning why Dr. Leroy became successful with SCP-7553 prior was due to initial testing being little to no consequence for him, while being in grave danger was certainly not. Upon this revelation, SCP-7553 was disqualified from Thaumiel status and stored back into its original containment locker. Dr. Leroy was posthumously congratulated for his research contributions regarding the object. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Tannis Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell. Link in the description.